Just before his ascension, Jesus said to his disciples, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Well, here in Australia and the South Pacific Islands, we know we're at the ends of the earth. That part we know. But where is Judea and Samaria? If Jesus was on earth today and used the term Judea and Samaria, he may be vilified for being politically incorrect. What the Bible calls Judea and Samaria, our politicians and mainstream media call the West Bank or Occupied Territories. Yet, this is the place where David first became king, where he reigned in Hebron for seven years. Bethlehem is where Jesus was born. Imagine if Jesus had been born in this era instead of 2,000 years ago. Mary and Joseph would not be allowed in Bethlehem because today Jews are not allowed to enter the city. So Judea and Samaria is the geographical region that looks like a kidney bean on the maps of Israel. But today I have a very special guest in studio, a Jewish man who lives in Samaria. So while you have a think about the Bible stories that are set in places mentioned as Judea and Samaria, we're going to listen to the Australian production by Esther Oakley and Andrew Hagar pray for the peace of Jerusalem. My guest today is Shmuel, otherwise in English Samuel or Sam, and he is the director of CFOIC Heartland, the Israel office from Judea and Samaria, to bring a message to Christian audiences across Australia. He was born and raised in Israel, served in the IDF, has two academic degrees, law and Jewish history. He and his wife, Michal, live in Zufim, a small town in Samaria. They have four children and her parents, Michal's grandparents, were among the founders founders of Kedumen. I'm terrible at the pronunciations. The first Jewish community in Samaria and therefore his family represents the third and fourth generations that have settled in Samaria. Really want to welcome you, Shmuel, to Australia and especially to Bendigo. It's Thank a privilege you. and a joy to have you with us today. We can't imagine the depth of grief and heartache your nation uh, has going through since October the 7th. So we just want you, first of all, to know that we grieve with you and are determined to stand with you. But welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real blessing and pleasure to be here. As we know, since October the 7th, that that was the worst thing that's happened since the Holocaust. And the rise of anti-Semitism here in Australia, we've been shocked. What we've seen in Melbourne, in Sydney. So I'm just wondering from your perspective, as you have arrived in Australia, you've been here before. Has Have you felt it different to before? Have you felt the anti-Semitism? What's your feeling on this? No. uh, Me personally, remember, I come here after invitations of kind people like you. Yeah. And people that want to hear about Israel, want to bless Israel. (laughs) So I'm in the right right perspective. Yeah. It's all orchestrated for me. I go from one place to another. And not only... I don't encounter anti-Semitism. I encounter big, huge love for Israel. For me, I'm feeling blessed. But, of course, every place I go, I talk to the people, and I mention the fact, uh, news, it's on the news. Yeah. Anti-Semitism all around uh, Mm. Australia. I think Melbourne, even more than other places. Oh, and Sydney. They've both been bad. This is something that you uh, need to address. This is something that uh, needs to be... um, you know, discussed between mm. you and your friends. You know, the saying that bad things happen when mm. good people just stay silent, don't do anything. Yeah. This is exactly the, it. The situation, you know, Australia, Jewish community that started much before the Holocaust, but a big wave of them came from the Holocaust. Isn't it Melbourne, like the biggest Holocaust survivor? Yeah. And there's a museum in Melbourne. So you can yeah. imagine. Yeah. The feeling, the loneliness, oh. the devastating news that your, the people, your neighbors are against you. Mm. They don't like you. And wow, I think it's it's really um, something that you need to deal with and, and to support your friends, the Jewish community of Australia. And they need to know they're not alone. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. So for our listeners today, what does CFOIC Heartland 
stand for and what's the nature of your work? So CFOAC stands for Christian Friends of Israeli Communities. And we are talking about, as you started in your introduction, about the communities in Judea and Samaria. So on the media, usually, the official media, Mm -hmm. we are, as you said, uh, occupying the territories. And there's an expression that was used to describe our communities. It's called settlers. Oh, yes. Um, The settlements, the settlers. And it's always in a bad connotation of... Yeah, somebody came here and violently took something that it's not is, and look at them, right? <laughs> so we are trying to uh, change, and we've been trying to change it for 25 years. We came back to the biblical heartland with Judea and Samaria because of the long-lasting connection we have to the land. Mm. So Christian Friends of Israeli Communities is doing the promise of bringing Christian into the connection to this land. All of Israel is holy. I mean, people call it the Holy Land. But what is really the essence? I think, as you mentioned, the biblical heartland, cities like the Shechem, where Abraham came to receive the promise about the land in Genesis 12. You will be blessed. Where was it? It's in the Oak of Moe, where the amount of blessing and the amount of curse mm-hmm. is there. Mm-hmm. In the time of Moses, in the time of Joshua, Joseph is being buried there. You go a bit to the south, you see Shiloh, where the tabernacle yes, yes. stood. We've been there. <laughs> you go yes. south, you see, go to Bethel, where the, the, the letter, the, the dream of the letter of Jacob, and you go south, you go to Bethlehem, and you go south, you go to Hebron. Hebron. Should I really explain why we have a connection to this area? So the funny part was that in 1948, when Israel was established, we did not include this area. It wasn't mm-hmm. in our hand. Jerusalem was split into two, and this area, Judea and Samaria, was under the custody of the Jordanians. In 1967, we were able to liberate mm-hmm. the land. And with that, a promise of generations to come back to our land. So you can imagine that every person that ever had a dream to go back to the land, he didn't have a dream to go back to Tel Aviv. Yeah, <laughs> Tel Aviv wasn't there. Mm-hmm. It's going back to the places of the Bible. Yeah, and thank God in 1967 we were able to do so. Mm-hmm. The problem, of course, is mm-hmm. our neighbors. Yes, and the Arabs of the area that tried to do everything possible to make our life a living hell made living in the communities of Judea and Samaria a challenge. So what we do is simple. On a regular day, we come to a Christian and we say. You believe in the connections of the people to Israel? Yes. Mm. Do you can do you understand that the Bible talks about Judea and Samaria as the main biblical heartland? The answer yes. Yes. Do you mm. understand that till this day, 2023, 24, this time, it's still a challenging place to live in? Yeah. When you hear about you know terror attack, when you hear about situation, you know, I always mention that my son. He dressed to school on a bulletproof bus. This yeah. is a dangerous area most of the time. And Christians around the world understand that. They call our people modern day pioneers. Yeah. Because really still struggling to live in our land. And what are we trying to achieve? Why do we live there? Why are we not protecting our kids? They're moving to Tel Aviv. The mm. truth is, the reality is, we are fulfilling a prophecy. Amen. And in yeah. 1967, the miracle of the six days war yeah. showed us God is here is for you to come and grab it. If you're going to live in Tel Aviv, nobody's going to live there. Mm-hmm. So you're going to live there. You're going to be challenging yourself, like my wife's family, one community after another to settle the land. It's not a bad word. To settle the land is a blessing and it's a prophecy coming true. And that's what we do. Three mm-hmm. you see throughout the years, throughout the time, we are helping communities in what they need to grow, to be stronger, to defend themselves, and to be a place of a blessing. Mm, that's amazing. And take my hat off to the courage of your communities. See, we've just been referring to all the places in Judea, Samaria, that um, are in the Bible, all the stories that our listeners would right. know well right. that are connected to this land. Your town, I'll get you to pronounce it, um, where could people identify whereabouts you're living? <laughs> <laughs> so my community is called Sufim. Mm-hmm. Literally uh, means to observe. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because we are on the eastern part mm-hmm. and we 
literally when you come to visit Sufim, there's an observation point, an overlook, all of Israel. Oh, okay. So yeah. you see the coast. You yep. see from Chadera and all the way to Ashdod. Yep. All of Israel is under us. And this mm. represents the fact that we are on the mountains of Samaria. Yeah. And when you're living on a mountain, you can control the area under. Yeah. So if you want to talk biblical perspective, I would say the nearest area that was identified is the pit where Joseph was thrown to. Oh, really? Dothan. Joseph put in the right? pit, yep. So this is not far from us. Oh, okay. And of course, we're not far from Shechem, yep. where the, of course, the, the mountains are. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, right mm. there in the center. Wow. That's amazing. So thinking about, you know, this being settled, what would be the geographical size and even the population size of the area that the Jews are in the area there now? So uh, you, there's two differences. There's the yep. area and the area you said that the Jews are. Yeah, yes, Because you, you, yes. you're correct in understanding that this area is basically the mountains that are northern from Jerusalem and mm. south of Jerusalem. Yeah. So if you go to Jerusalem, in your mind or in the map, you can look it up. Look to the northern part. This is a big mountain that comes from the big Arab cities of Ramallah mm -hmm. and then Shechem and more than that, Jenin. Yep. These are the mountains of Samaria. On the right side, you will see the Jordan Valley. So it's easy to recognize. And the Jordan Valley, which is next to the river bank of the Jordan River, this is also an area in dispute. This mm, is also yes. a place that they cannot see the connection <laughs> to yeah, Israel. Yeah, yes. we, we laugh at that, but, but you from understand? From the Bible, we right? understand it, but yes. And on the south side of Jerusalem, it's Bethlehem and the yes. mountain of Hebron, all the way to an area called the South Mountain of Hebron. So all this region, it's a big region with many, many, many communities, many mm. Arab communities as well, big Palestinian cities, we're talking about more than half a million Jewish people live there. Wow. So yeah. why is it funny to say that? Because people, they don't understand the numbers. Yeah. How many Jewish people live in Israel? Somewhere between seven to nine million. Yeah. Half a million is not a small amount. It's a big percentage. And I wouldn't say it's a big percentage, but it's a percentage to count. Some people think the settlers, the, the people of the communities are a couple of religious people living yeah. on the top hill. Oh, no, no. We have cities. We have communities. We have developed a lot of areas in the area. We have great people, great education. We have a lot of things to come and see more than anything. Mm. We have the roots of the biblical connection. Mm. When you come and visit Israel, and all the listeners need to know, when you come to Israel and people come to Israel, there's the obvious. People go to see the Sea of Galilee, yeah. right? Yes. Nazareth. Come see an area that still gets the feeling and the emotions of when you imagine the biblical heartland, yeah. what it was in the time of the Bible. Yeah. You go to pa pla places that are literally places you read in the prophet. Tkoa, Amos, where all the things happen in Ophrah, in Bethel. The real deal of the stories of the Bible in the mountains that are still reminding us that's what we read about. Amen. To come to visit. Yes. So while you contemplate um, all the, that's just been said, we're going to listen to Karen Davis sing Israel, My Beloved. My guest today is Shmuel, and he lives in Judea, Samaria, and it's such a blessing to have him with us here in Bendigo. So you've, we've just been talking about the biblical heartland of Israel, and if anyone's listening to the news, um, the secular news particularly, they would hear negativity in the press about Jewish settlers, in inverted commas, who live in the heartland, and we did just touch on it. Well, can you tell us why it's so important for families like yours to risk your lives to establish communities and live in this area? What are these communities like? You started to touch on it, but let's unpack that a little bit more. Why you need to live there and what it's like? I think the main issue to consider is the fact that people who live in Judea and Samaria, their criteria of life are different than others. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll, I'll break it up for you, okay? You ask a person, random person, you ask him, you stop him on the street, you ask him, why did you choose to live here? It can be Bendigo, it could be anywhere else in the world. Most of the time, he's going to give you three answers. Number one, safety. It's a safe community. It's important for me to have secured my kids, my family. Number two, he's going to say, there's uh, some, you know, I'm near my work. It's always something that is important to know, just me mm -hmm. personally. I don't know if you mentioned this in my bio, but I was an educator in Hong Kong. Okay. Not far from here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in Hong Kong, in every, uh, you know, test about, like, uh, life quality, mm -hmm. the quality of life is really high because people say our commute time is very low. Okay. It's a small yes, place. Yeah. It takes us time, 10, 15 minutes to get to work. Sounds like Great Bendigo. Quality. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're working around Bendigo or anywhere yeah. you live. Ten um, minutes. I don't need to travel a lot to work. It's great. And number three is leisure. You know, people want you know, a nice coffee place nearby, mm. maybe swimming pool. Just life, right? Living yeah. life. Absolutely. I, I love <laughs> oh, yeah, I love coffee oh, and I love a swim. Me too. I <laughs> yeah. love coffee. That's another conversation. Yeah. Let's talk about coffee. An important, very important topic. So... When you ask somebody in Judea and Samaria, they're probably going to tell you these are not my criteria. Mm. People who live in Judea and Samaria, I think most of the time, they understand this is a chain in history that they have an opportunity like nobody had before. Yep. We mentioned the Holocaust here, mm. but forget about the Holocaust. Think about history. For 2,000 years of exile, every Jewish child received the message from his father, from his mother, saying, one day we will return to our land. Yeah. Throughout the history, it looked like a dream. Mm. What are the odds? We were always in a bad situation, in war, in, in, in places that there's no chance it's going to happen. So we're back in our land. There's a miracle, a prophecy coming true. We came back. God brought us in, 48. And then there's a miracle again. We're able to win a war, the Six Days War, nothing less than a miracle. By the way, I met once a veteran. Last time I was in Australia, okay. and I met a veteran from the Australian Army. Yeah. And he said that, you know, oh, they yes. always give the example of the Six Days War as right. something you shouldn't learn about. Yes. You know why? Yeah. Because it didn't make sense. Yeah. Because <laughs> they can't work it out. Because <laughs> if, if you really look at the <laughs> Army criteria, just like yeah. that, you're not going to win it. Yeah. So going back to the topic, all of this happened, and then we have an opportunity and we believe that we can work with God on living this prophecy, making it happen. Mm. Are you going to say no to that? No. Like for me, it makes perfect sense. We are living a prophecy. We're doing something that our forefathers only dreamed about, to come to live in the land, to serve in the army, and protect our communities, and live next to the area where it all started. This is mm. the biblical heart, and I'm going to repeat it again and again. We are living a prophecy, and we're coming back to the place that we, we prayed for years to come. Mm, so for millennia. It's, to... it's a no-brainer for us. Yeah. And these are the criteria. So, yeah, safety is a risk. We're trying our best. We have the army. We have ourselves. So maybe later we're going to talk about this time mm. of war. It's, it's a bigger challenge, absolutely. But it's not there, uh, but we hope it's going to be there. We have the fact that we don't work next to our communities. Yeah, it's a challenge. But we're going to face it. And leisure, mm, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> not so much. Small communities, not developed enough. We pray one day it's going to be the best place to live in Israel with all those criteria. But until then, th that day, we're still going to live in a place that is a dream coming true. Mm, so it really is a sacrifice. So after the October the 7th, we keep hearing that um, Hamas want to do the same thing to Judea Samaria mm -hmm. um, that they did in the communities down near Gaza. Mm -hmm. As I said, we really admire the courage and bravery for uh, re-establishing these communities. But you mentioned the issue of safety. Right. How safe is it in these communities? Every other day we hear of another terrorist attack right. on the communities. How concerned are you about Hamas attacking in your communities? The truth is, I'm very concerned. Yeah. I'm very concerned because I know that as we speak right now, there are people, there are terrorists that are 
planted this. Yeah. And it's not a, a matter of imagination anymore. No, no. It's something that we saw with our eyes. And I want to actually, you know, start by taking you back to that day. You know, when, when it started on the 7th of October, it was a Saturday, it was a Shabbat. And for us, you know, it's a day of, uh, of peace. We don't use our phones. And immediately when we begin to get the news from our friends, soldiers that were drafted, we all understood. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to have something to protect himself because we're coming next. Yeah. They're yeah. going to come for us. And from that moment... Until this moment, we have a big concern, and, and people are working on it day and night, how to secure our communities. Mm -hmm. We understood on the 7th of October, and it's important to note, we understood on the 7th of October that, number one, the fact we live in Judea and Samaria doesn't mean it's more dangerous. Look what happened yes. in Kibbutzim on mm -hmm. the south and cities that have nothing to do which is settling the land. Yeah. They were never asked to be called settlers, but in the videos that the Hamas took at that day, they called them. These are settlers. These are settlers. You mm -hmm. understand that yeah. the word settling now means Jew lives in Israel as a yeah. settler. Well, I'll put it this in a side for a second, and I would say they have the motivation to do it. Mm -hmm. They're trying. They're planning. The only thing we can do is to do everything possible to protect ourselves. Mm. <clears throat> and it's true about like a personal perspective. People need to have a gun, a rifle, whatever they can. And also in our organization, that was the, this is the main thing we're dealing right now, how to help the communities secure themselves. So we are from the beginning of October, from the 7th of October, we are, you know, people from around the world are, 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 are supporting us to buy drones and cameras and fences and and hospital and, and and ambulances everything possible mm. to secure our community it's a real concern and if you're listening to this now and you go to our website cfoic.com you will see that's our main focus yeah how can we protect our communities how can we allow them to protect themselves and another component i'm going to throw here think about the fact that 70 to 80 percent of the male the men, the mm. fathers, left. Yeah, They were called to reserve, and they fought the north and, and in the south. Yeah. So the communities, not only we're isolated, we are among the Palestinian people, yes. we under the risk, we are also without the manpower men. to protect our communities. So, it was a big challenge, and all the equipment that they needed, you know, drones and, and, and everything around, cameras, and just ways to protect our communities is vital and yeah. it's crucial at this time. Because in the uh, talk you gave this afternoon here in Bendigo, you were speaking about getting drones and the fact that it's women and children that are left in many of these communities. Mm -hmm. So we will put the um, website address up for those that go on our YouTube to be able to have a look and see because the drones and other equipment is very critical, isn't it, to be able to help in that security in yeah. these communities. I use the word drone because that's the most uh, simple thing to understand. <laughs> yeah. You have eyes in the sky. Yes. That's yeah. great, right? Yeah. Also, we're talking about night vision goggles. Yeah. We're talking about thermo cameras. Mm. Thermo cameras are cameras, you know, you, you put them on night. Yes. Yeah. And they and they dedicate, like, only for heat. So if you see, like, heat waves over there, it could be an animal or it could be a terrorist. And I can yeah. tell you that in the past, we've been doing it for 25 years. We always talk about protecting Judea and Samaria. It's not something new. No. And you cannot imagine the amount of times that our cameras and the gear we were able to give the communities because of Christian support around the world saved lives. Amen. And that's so encouraging for our listeners to know. So just going back to the term settlers there's another term that's often heard and it's settler violence mm. and the way the media describes it it sounds terrible it sounds like you know you're out there beating up your neighbors but we know that the reality is something very different can you t explain to our listeners so that when they hear that term that they're not um, falling for the normal narrative of what settler violence means that, that's a painful term. I know it is. Why yeah. it's such a painful term for me? Because, you know, I live there. Yeah. And I know what's happening. And I know my neighbors. Yeah. My neighbors, my friends, 
the people around me, they're all about kindness. Yeah. They're all about doing good. Our communities is a model for helping one another. They're serving 70-80% of them in the army in reserve. Just for example, you know, organ donors. Israel is the biggest organ donor of the world. Really? And Judea and Samaria's wow. communities are the highest. Highest, there. really. People wow. who love and care yeah. for life and, they and, love and life. want to give everything to others. Mm. We are violent. We yeah. just look for life. There is not. It's you need to be there to understand. So let's go back to the roots. Why? Why? Out of no, out of nowhere, people begin to talk about um, violent from the settlers. I think you know, it's you know, politics one on one. Yes. Yeah. When foreign governments, especially let's talk about the U.S., okay, you know, they are criticizing Hamas and they criticize the Hamas from the beginning. And, you know, they have people, they have voters and their voters called them and sent letters and say, why are you only criticizing the Hamas? Yeah. What about the other side? Mm. So you understand you need to invent the other side. And every time they talk about violence from settlers, basically what they're saying is, you know, Hamas are bad guys. But, you know, you have also those bad guys. Can you compare? Mm. Did we ever rape, kill, torture? I don't even want to say. No, no, it's too horrendous. horrible things that we saw with our eyes on the 7th of October. Did we ever encounter such a thing? Mm. Did we ever heard of a massacre made by settlers, by Jews, against Arabs? Mm. Did we ever in the world history heard about Jewish Terrorism on the same sentence. Come on, mm. give me a break. The reason they're using this terminology is exactly to show oh, we are grieving criticized to both sides. Now, even when you go into the details and the numbers, you will understand that all the claims are, as it's called, fake news. And Absolutely. What's the yep. biggest proof that a week and a half ago, after all the world and all the media and all the conversation, and I didn't know it came all over Australia, I thought it's madness. But yeah. if you heard of this term, you know, violence from settlers, you probably assume there are hundreds of them, right? Yeah. That's yeah. So all over the place. So a week and a half ago, they found four people and they blamed them and they freeze their oh, bank accounts right. yes, yeah. for minor incidents. How many they found? Four people. Four, yeah. When you have this claim so many times, you would think there will be yeah. dozens of them. Thousands. They found four people, mm. and even them, they don't even charge them in like violent, minor issues. There is the understanding we live with them together. Mm. When you live in New York City or in Tel Aviv, you don't have any exposure to Palestinians. Yes, we're exposed to them. They live near us. Some, their arguments, there are issues. But never violent. Yes. These yeah. are lies that we shouldn't even, you know, answer to. Yeah. I'm sorry to raise it, but it's just like I know people hear these things yeah, and I know that the truth is so far, from, far from what what people hear. Absolutely. Well, while we digest that very big subject, we're going to listen to Paul Wilbur singing the song of Moses, Who is Like Thee, O Lord? My guest today is Shmuel El and or Sam, and um, he's from Judea, Samaria. And this week, and it's been going on for a little while, the International Court in The Hague, uh, they're trying to try Israel out for war crimes. And even just as we're recording today, um, an Australian um, is in that court and saying that they're trying to not only um, try Israel for war crimes, but they're now trying to get Israel to withdraw from Judea and Samaria and uh, saying that Israel's existence in 1948 is illegal. On the other hand, in the United States this week, Christians at the NRB or the National Religious Broadcasting Conference is, has made a resolution calling on all Christians to stop using the term West Bank and only use the term biblical term Judea and Samaria because language matters. So Sam, what would be the impact if the nations had their way and forced Israel to withdraw from Judea and Samaria? Hmm. I think that it's not, a, not an option. It's mm. not an option because 
first of all, you know, you hope and you pray that people are going to wake up yeah. from the imagination they have about what is peace and mm. what are we dealing with. You know, 7th of October, woke up to the realization. Because, you know, just need to look back at history. Not so far away, 2005. In 2005, there were Jewish people, Jewish settlers, as you call them, but yes. settlers or communities, call them whatever you want. There were Jewish people, there were existing IDF soldiers in the Gaza area. It was mm. called Gush Katif. And we had beautiful communities there working in agriculture on the ocean. Beautiful spot. Mm. Yeah, they lived inside Gaza and there was a lot of terror there. People would be shot on the way in and on the way out. It came to the fact that there was a community there called Netzarim. And to enter and leave, you had to have like armed guards every in every car. Oh. You couldn't even drive a regular car, if, if I'm not mistaken. That was a serious deal. Really, honestly, very difficult. And yet, the brave people of Gush Katif, of this area in, in Gaza, stood and said to the government, we are here because we are the belt that stops Gaza from attacking all of Israel. Mm. They were right. When yeah. we stood there in 2005 and we cried and we demonstrated and we said, please think about it. You are giving this area to Hamas. Mm. No, actually, it's not true because then Hamas wasn't in power. It yeah. took them a couple of months to vote them. A couple in. of months. <laughs> Hamas was voted mm. by the Gaza people become this place that is nothing less than a terror Disneyland. And I would remind the people, maybe you heard of the term before. The dream was that after we're going to leave, because we are always the obstacle, we're going to leave the Gaza area and then billions of dollars are going to be going into Gaza. And it's going to be, listen to this, the Singapore, Singapore of the Middle East. Yep. Right? And yep. Here yep. it's close to Singapore, so people yep. know what's Singapore. Yeah. Yes. And billions of dollars indeed went in, and bi billions of, of dollars were used to build a city, but not a city, an underground city. Yeah. <laughs> so all the tunnels and all the missiles and all the mess and all the madness you see in Gaza is the fruits of the labor of Hamas. And billions of dollars from all over the world, including Australian money, I wouldn't exactly. be surprised. Yes, sadly. And 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 look look at the results. All yeah. of Israel is uh, came under the risk of missiles, mm. and they developed this massive attack on the seventh of October. And right now, the situation is that you know all of Israel was under the risk from being shot from Gaza. Why all of this happened? Because we weren't there. Now, take this, copy, paste, Judea and Samaria. Yeah. Mm. Everything I said, plus one component. But for that, you need to go and see the map. Every area in Judea and Samaria, all hills and mountains. Mm. What happened in Gaza was when we were in the same height. Yeah. When they will control the mountains of Israel, mm. Judea and Samaria, there's literally not going to be a spot in Israel protected mm. so you know you fool me once shame on you fool yeah. me twice shame on me yeah. Israel tried so many times to have so many solutions with the story of, of, of Judea and Samaria with the uh, Palestinians around us giving up our land is not an option we cannot live in a protected Israel under Judea and Samaria controlled by anybody else but Israel. Mm. It's not an option. Yeah. So it's a risk. It's it's a situation. It's a difficult. It's a challenge. You can call it whatever you want. And the truth is that even the future, there are many questions. How would we solve all this issue? All right. But one thing we cannot do. We cannot risk all of Israel and give the area of Judea and Samaria to the Palestinians because we just got proof, the biggest proof. Yes what they're planning and what they're doing mm. and thinking about it giving this price for the, for after the 7th of october i, I really it, it, it makes me sad yeah if you consider that people are considering this mm. and for for those of us as christians and are listening to us um as you said before biblical prophecy 
speaks of God saying, I will bring you back to the land. So this is standing on God's word. This is standing with with the prophets. And so for us, this is a not a no negotiable. Of course, everything we said until now was the biblical perspective. Yes. This answer was about the security perspective. Correct. Of course, it's 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 an add-on. Yes, yeah. Well, they, but they go together, <coughs> don't they? Um, so this area of our language matters, calling it Judea, Samaria, rather than occupied territory or the West Bank. I know um, the many times that I've spoken, or we've, <clears throat> we've gone to the land, and it's like, no, I feel very... I can't call it the West Bank because people seem to only understand that. How important is it for Christians to use the term Judea, Samaria? <coughs> Sorry. Judea and Samaria, the reason behind it is to connect it to the biblical perspective. If you call it anything else, you're talking about there's something new here. We came, mm. we took this area, we liberated this area. Not important how, but we are newbies. Hey, welcome. There's a new area here. We're coming. We're coming home. And that's not the case. Judea and Samaria is exactly the place we came back after 2,000 years of exile because we wanted to reconnect with the mm. with the Bible. Yeah. So as I said before, the prophecies that talk about the mountains of Samaria, that's what, what, what we had in mind. That's what we prayed for every morning, every night. That what we were, this is the blessing. So when you're calling it something else but Judea and Samaria, you're referring to an area that came out of thin air. And mm -hmm. this is not the case. Mm -hmm. So as Christians, and I would say more than that, as Christian and Jews, if there's a connection, it is the shared Bible, right? Yes, absolutely. And you read those places and you understand what we're talking about. And, you know, funny enough, the longest lasting agreement, Abraham buying the city of Hebron to bury yes. his wife, yeah. right? You have an agreement. If you believe in that, if you believe in the word of God in the Bible, you should have and see the connection right there. Yeah. No question asked. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, but on top of that, you have the security issues, and on top of that, you have history and UN resolutions. I don't. Let's not go there even. Yeah. Even from the very basic notion of biblical perspective, it's a no-brainer. Judea and Samaria equals biblical heart and of Israel. Mm. Amen. And that's such an important aspect, I think, and I, I just want to put that challenge out there for our listeners, is that we use, adopt the term Judea Samaria and drop the phrase, the West Bank. Because even when we've travelled and we have to put your documents on for the Australian government, uh, they say, and they, they put up, um, it's not safe to travel to the West Bank. And there's all these sorts of things that they um, tell us. I can add on that. Yeah. That more than terminology, I think it's, it's, it's important for you, for people who listen, to come to Israel and say, hey, what about Judea and Samaria? I want to see the tabernacle in Shiloh. Yes. I want to see the tomb of the patriarchs. I want to see the amount of blessing and amount of curse. I want to see the Ark of Moab. I want to see those places. I came to Israel without it. Like, what's the point? Yeah, now, yes. if you're listening to this and you heard this, me saying it's not the point, no, it's great. What you saw was amazing. <laughs> but next time you're coming, hopefully you will ask, please, we want to go to the biblical heartland of Israel. And I'll say more than that. You come to Israel, reach out to us. We in CFOIC, that's what we do. You reach out to us and we will show you. Mm. We will connect you with communities, Christian friends of Israeli communities. It's not one-sided. Oh, you're a friend, donate, support, and help them. No, 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 no. You come to Israel, you will be welcome as a friend. Mm. You come to their homes. You come and you meet them in person. You see what we talked about, the pioneers now. Yes. It sounds nice, right, on the radio. Maybe it's yeah. inspiring. Don't listen and don't believe me. Come and see what you're asking. Yes. You're welcome. And I and I dare every person who comes, shoot us an email, at, say, We're, I'm coming to Israel, I want to see, I want to mm. visit. Mm. I'm telling you, I promise you in, in, in this time that what you're going to see and how you're going to encounter Judea and Samaria 
it's going to change your perspective forever. Mm. Please try us. Mm. And we would definitely say that has changed our life Maybe coming that. to the land. And I know everybody that has done that has also been challenged. And we've been blessed to go to Shiloh mm. um, and to Hebron and um, certainly know what a change it makes in your life right. to see what we've read in our Bibles for all these years. And there you, you see it there. It's um, I just can't... I agree with you more on, on that. And uh, so as we just finish up today, we've probably got about half a minute or so. Any last things you'd like to say to those that are listening to us today? Yeah. Um, I think the most important thing, and you talked about it in the beginning, is where do we draw our inspiration and how do we get our news? The media and what we hear outside is usually so far, <laughs> so, so, so mm -hmm. not relevant. I think you should go ahead and check better resources. Subscribe to cfoc.com. See what we have, the news from the land updates. See the growth. See the blessing. And please do come support us and understand that we are playing a vital role in the redemption of Israel and we're living a prophecy. And honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say I'm part of it. Mm -hmm. But there are half a million brave people who live this day in, day out. Mm -hmm. And we didn't talk a lot about the war, but many of the soldiers that died during the, their battle right now in the reserve came from our communities. People that left their homes, left children and mothers, and, and went for, to battle to protect our nation. They, they draw the power from Judea and Samaria, from mm -hmm. the prophecy. We came back to the land. It's a challenge. It's a task. But we will stay strong and we will fight in the name of the God of Israel. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Muel, to coming to Bendigo and yeah. for spending this uh, time to talk to us. And so as we go out today, we're going to first of all listen to Marty Goetz singing Isaiah 62 for Zion's sake and then finishing off with the Shafar and the ironic blessing. So you can get also more information that you won't get on the normal news if you get onto our YouTube site because we and, and the radio station here because we're trying to update, we keep in touch with our friends that are in the land of Israel and keep in touch with the, uh, the information that is accurate. So stay tuned, subscribe to us, like it, and please share. Please share. It's really important to get the word out.